Rather than attempting to summarize my attitude to architecture by way of an introduction, I'll describe a series of projects and assume that my position as a member of the contemporary architectural debate will become clearer by the, by the close of this tape. I don't consider myself to be able to be categorizable as a member of a group. My palette of materials is broad and vested in the particular context of the projects. My buildings do not have theref therefore an immediately recognizable style or signature, but they are spatially and materially consistent. My starting point with a project is the notion of, notion of cultural situation. To understand architecture as the creation of settings for deeply rooted archetypal situations is central to my interpretation of form. I belong to a school of thought that has as its foundation a phenomenological interpretation of the European city as a means to understanding our contemporary cultural condition. The first slide illustrates my recently completed office building at Stockley Park. It's the first building of the second phase of the park, which is near Heathrow on the outskirts of London. The first phase was generated from a master plan by Arab Associates, and the first buildings were indeed by Arab Associates. Following those first buildings, a number of well-known architects um, worked on the park and illustrate a common brief being handled in, in, in various ways that deal with the problems of the skin and entrance and what is known as shell and core building, that is to say an architecture that defines, defines perhaps 50% of the building, leaving the larger area of the floor to be fitted out by, by others or by tenants unknown. My building sits astride a basin of water that has been created um, that flows into the, 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 the canal to the south. The buildings on the park as a whole are all orientated nine degrees off north and you'll see that the from the from the site diagram that the southern wing of the building is is to that orientation whilst the north wing sits parallel with the entry road this was the first rule that was broken and it enables the building to relate to its context in a closer way than some of the other buildings that are, are placed away from the road. The two wings split to echo the geometry of the lake and the opening up to the landscape and form an entrance at the, at, at the split. The north is set in a hard landscape and the south is set in a soft landscape and in the middle a divide creates a cascade that falls into the lake below. Water is used to herald the threshold to this phase of the park so that you hear the cascade as you cross the road at road level and you are when you approach the building you are hearing and smelling the effect of moving water which is calming. There's a lower terrace that sits on the level of the lake and this is a place to which people working in the building can retreat. The skin of the building is a panelized system of glass blocks that are bonded together with silicone beads. And, and the blocks themselves are translucent rather than transparent, having a fiberglass insert. That means that solar devices like brisole or fritting of the glass or other devices that give a skiography to the facades are omitted to make a very laconic and clear definition between the ground floor and the first floor of what is intended to be a glass pavilion. The axonometric shows the passage into the building. At the forecourt is the bridge between the hard landscape and the soft landscape 
that culminates in the weir. The, the entrance then is under the porte cochere, which acts also as a fire escape for those in the first floor, southern wing. Entering through the doors and under this terrace, one comes to a sequence that starts with a double height space that is lit to one side. And on the first floor, there's a marble wall of arabescato. The slabs are taken from one block, cut in thin veneers, and you see the striation as it moves through the block. The passage continues at the ground floor, but at the first floor is closed by a partition, which has a balcony that relates to the skylight above, a finger which then works back into the central stair hall of the building. The staircase protrudes into the space and as you move up the first flight you move under the gallery level and then emerge into the the space itself. This view is taken from the stair hall looking back towards the entrance and you can see the reflection on the marble wall which is aqueous, a theme that runs through a lot of the skins of the building from the water outside to the wateriness of the facade itself then into the reflective sheet in the entrance reception area the floor is made of a Cumberland slate which is a deep grey green and has small fissures in it and seen from above looks almost as if one is looking into a still water. Passing under the gallery, one moves up the staircase onto the first floor and you reach the opening to the lift. The lift is purposely suppressed and placed behind a wall in order that the culmination of the building is something other than uh, a piece of technology. The balustrading to the staircase is all placed at 1.1 meters so that it wraps around the gallery and into it is, is then drawn a wreathed handrail in elm that works around the outside of the stair and not around the, the inner stringer. The stair works its way around a steel column that is encased in slabs of slate, the same slate as the floor, and forms a proscenium through which one looks back to the entrance. Emphasis is given to the depth of the space by coloured materials, paint on the wall and the veneered panel that heralds the moment that one ascends into the space. The light is foiled by deep fins that reduce the impact of the glazing. The, the proscenium is echoed in a number of other elements in the building that are more than single height. The entrance with its canopy, this element as one moves into the stair hall which is double height, and finally the wall at the rear of the space that faces the landscape and is itself a fictive landscape. This view is looking back into the stair hall from the entrance again, from which you can see the balcony that is placed at the bridge between the two sides of the offices on the first floor. Beyond it is a wall that is 20 foot by 18 foot, that is a bowed wall that faces the landscape and echoes the geometry of the opening like a, like a focal, focal point in a lens. On it is painted a mural which I undertook with my associate Phil Meadowcroft and it was a painting that developed out of a reaction to working at Stockley Park. The subject is the rape of Europa depicted as a struggle of human and animal 
and male and female creativity emerging from a landscape that is serene and primal by turns and is seen here as a, a means of describing the making of Stockley Park out of what was a rubbish tip. The primal disorder at the base of the painting emerging into a clarity at the top and the light. The colors are muted and linear, abstracted to form a fragmented series of spatial elements that echo the making of the architecture itself. And the wall is depicted against a deep red background that acts as a frame. <laughs> 